All right, guys, welcome back to F1 News. An absolutely sensational qualifying session for the sprint tomorrow. Lando Norris put to done pole in massively controversial fashion. His lap time that was good enough for pole was deleted and then reinstated just as Lewis Hamilton crossed the line, seemingly believing he was the man on pole position. What has happened here? What do Mercedes have to say about it? Is there anything dodgy going on again with the FIA and their decision making? Very much into it. Your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, before the day began, questions on Carlos Sainz. We know that he is being linked to Red Bull and Mercedes and Audi most certainly and Helmut Marco made it very clear as we saw in yesterday's video that they are in conversations with Sainz. Helmut Marco said it outright that sure Sainz is in conversations with Audi he has a very lucrative offer from Audi we are in considerations to discuss these negotiations with him as well but we can't offer quite what Audi can offer. Now of course Christian Horner says well Checo is doing a very good job and honestly Checo did do a very good job today, arguably until the rain started coming down. We'll discuss in a second. But also, Christian Horner said that any rumours around science are pure speculation. So this is just what's funny about Red Bull, isn't it? That Helmut Marko, who is meant to be, you know, right next to Horner in the decision making for the team is saying one thing and then Horner basically says that that's complete BS what Marco said and there's nothing true to it. So this has kind of always been the case but especially now given that we know that Marco and Horner are at odds shall we say in terms of the decision making for Horner to effectively dismiss everything that Marco said yesterday is kind of classic Horner but it's also maybe not what you might expect. But let's dive into the qualifying stuff after of course practice. We had one practice session in the very early morning. This is Alex Albon's absolutely sensational you have, but unfortunately didn't make him go any faster. The practice session was a bit weird because lots of track evolution, man. This circuit is a good circuit, but wow, does it create for some drama with the way that the circuit is, um, you know, the bitumen they've put on some parts of the track. They believe that's going to ramp up the track over the weekend, but, you know, the level of the greasiness that happened as soon as the rain started coming down. Wow, what a Q3 we had, SQ3. We'll get into it in a second. Now, Mercedes looked terrible here, SD Ferrari, but um, there was lots of hard tyre running, so a little bit difficult to read into exactly, but it's no secret that the Mercedes and Hamilton said it was just shocking in the dry, like they had no pain. And as soon as the rain came down, he felt like, all right, this is my time to shine. Now, Lance Stroll, he actually put it P1 here in the practice session. Piastri was second. Max Verstappen was third. But then sprint qualifying gets underway. So this is sprint qualifying for tomorrow's sprint race, which happens at very early morning in Europe, basically. And then the main qualifying for the main race is a few hours later. And honestly, based on the grid we have for tomorrow's sprint race, I might have to get up at 4 a.m. to watch it. This was crazy as well. I've never really seen anything like this before. The grass was on fire by the track. Now, there's been some debate as to why. I think people are saying that because of where the track is built, like um, the peat ground or whatever it is, is more sensitive to stuff like this occurring because I haven't really seen this elsewhere. And there was also questions as to whether there was anything else going on that was um, you know, leaking or whatever that was causing this consistently. But at turn five, the grass kept catching on fire. It happened during during practice earlier in the day that had to pause the session. Happened in quali as well. Thankfully, the rain put this out. But um, this is after the first session of qualifying here for the sprint race, where they have to all run the medium tyres. If you guys aren't aware, it's medium, medium, soft when you get to SQ3. But of course, the soft was not used based on the conditions. But what was happening here is through this corner, the cars are you know going over the bumps around the corner, and there's lots of sparks coming off the rear of the car from the titanium kind of like skid planks or whatever on the bottom of the car and those sparks were flying off the cars hitting the grass and then making the grass go on fire so they had to delay the start here to SQ2 but yeah these were the results of SQ1 it was still dry at this point the Mercedes were I mean here's Hamilton Russell barely squeaking through probably the most notable story though was Yuki Tsunoda out actually because Dana Ricciardo brand new chassis on his car this weekend. That was one of the big talking points for the weekend. And we'll see in the sprint and actual main qualifying in the race whether this continues. But Yuki Tsunoda has out-qualified Ricardo every time so far. And here Yuki was out in P19. Ricardo made it through to the second part of qualifying. So that is just an interesting story to look at. The Williams is terrible here, as you might well expect. Sure, there were some straights, but there's so much requirement for downforce generation and stability around this track that um, the Williams is bad. The 
Alpine is bad. Sonoda was the other man out. But Joe, he got through to Q2, SQ2, which I thought was a really cool story for him. I didn't think he was going to get any further. But, um, well, let's continue on with that. So Gasly, Ocon, Albon, Sonoda, Sargent out in Q1, SQ1, I keep saying. But, um, yeah, they basically said, seems like the cars are igniting. Sparks in the cars are igniting the grass runoff area. So, yeah, very strange set of circumstances. But this was the start of SQ2 because the rain was just about to start coming down and a combination of a track that you haven't been to in years, rain hitting the circuit, the kind of resurfacing they've done of parts of the track was a recipe for complete chaos. And that is what we got. This was pretty funny as well because Lando Norris and Piastri were crawling out of the pits because they wanted, understandably, to hold everybody back so that they could do their laps in the nice conditions before it rains and nobody else could. Now, actually, Red Bull and Mercedes, they weren't so concerned about this. They actually just went out a little bit later with slightly warmer tyres and put in good enough laps to get through. In the case of Verstappen, Perez and Hamilton, but not in the case of Russell, because Russell's first lap was not good enough. He was only, you know, half a tenth of Hamilton here, but the rain then started hitting the track and with a few minutes to go, that was all she wrote. There was no improvement possible. Russell did his first sector like half a second down on what he needed. And that was GG. So this was a really interesting SQ2 actually, because Verstappen was clear by a mile in SQ1, but then Perez went even further ahead. And Perez, like, you know, we talked about it yesterday. Marco is saying that Perez is basically running back to setups now and he's, you know, accepting where he is, but he's trying his best. And honestly, Perez, like, the way, if he continues performing like this, and sure, like, maybe when the rain came down, it wasn't great, but neither was Verstappen, and we'll certainly get into that. So Leclerc was only a tenth down. I thought, okay, it's interesting this potential battle for pole. But it was only really going to be a two-way fight, it seems, between, you know, maybe Verstappen, Perez, and then maybe Leclerc, maybe Norris. And um, obviously, when the raid happens, that very much, well, you can say levels the playing fields. And in some sense, it did between the strength of the cars. But Stroll was out, Ricardo was out, both Hasses, And then Russell was out in P11 with both Saubers, can you believe it, and Zhou Guan Yu at his home race, getting through to SQ3. Great story. The crowd were absolutely loving it. But the rain was only coming down. Down harder and harder and this was like the absolute perfect case scenario for complete chaos as I've said the rain the track situation the fact that nobody's been here in years like the you know resurfacing the grease on the surface of the track like just unbelievable conditions just a sensational final set of qualifying like what Bernie Eccleston said about putting sprinklers on the tracks to like artificially make it wet I'm not going to lie, he might be cooking with that idea because sessions like this, it doesn't get any better than this, I don't think, in Formula 1. If this was real quality, it'd have been even better. But still, it was absolutely worth getting up to watch. And also, the best thing was that it was drying slowly. Well, it was still raining, but like the track was getting drier and more you know, doable as the cars kept going around. So as the session came to a close it became possible to do better and better lap times. What you don't want is that like, it rains increasingly heavily and then the first lap is the lap, right? Because, you know, that's entertaining, but it's more entertaining when you get 10 minutes of chaos where it just gets slightly better and better over time so the drivers can keep improving and improving slowly and you never know who's going to be on pole until the very final second of the session. Now, this was Charles Leclerc in the wall. Not particularly badly in the wall, but he did bump his rear wing and his front wing. And the drivers, I mean, this was on their preparation lap for their main qualifying lap. And they were struggling so hard. Like, they were all over the place. Norris was off the track. Verstappen was off the track. Leclerc was actually in the wall here. And I think he might have maintained a little bit of damage and um, probably damaged his confidence a bit as well, actually, for the rest of the session. Although I'm pretty sure he did have enough to probably do better than he did. But I think he got held up by Joe on his first lap. And even Norris was saying that he was getting held up by the Ferraris. So five minutes to go. Verstappen was on a lap at this point, And then he was off the track. Now, there's also a question I will say on this because we're going to discuss track limits in a second and what's happened with Lando Norris. And the reason why Norris' lap time was reinstated was because he didn't gain an advantage by exceeding track limits on the previous corner. We'll explain that in a second. But if that's true, and if that's the reason why Norris was allowed to keep his lap, then maybe there's also an argument to say that if you exceed track limits elsewhere but don't gain an advantage, your lap should also stay. Because this lap from Verstappen, of course, is deleted because it goes off the track, but he clearly loses lots of time in doing so. But, um, you know, the lap was deleted. I don't have a problem with that rule. I think if you do go off the track, like, it should be deleted. 
limited, but it's interesting to discuss the implications here. So with a few minutes to go, you know, Leclerc was in the box just to make sure that his um, you know, front wing was okay. Hamilton actually came into the box for some different tyres. They put in some inters with different pressures in, I think, to try and give him an edge. So Hamilton hadn't even set a lap with a few minutes to go, and the conditions were so like treacherous, it was unbelievable. So this is two and a half minutes to go. Perez had just stuck at P1, Bottas was P2 a second down, and you know, it's conditions like this that really do separate the men from the boys in terms of who the really talented drivers are. Because Zhou Guan Yu is a far better driver than you or I. And he's a solid, respectable driver and he's done a solid job against Bottas the last couple of years. But he was just kidding. Like, he was going through it in this SQ3. Like, he could not keep the car on track. Bottas was seconds faster than him per lap. Like, the conditions were just that hard that it really just shows. And, you know, Norris versus Piastri, there was three seconds in it, I think, between those guys. And what Norris did was incredibly impressive. But, um, yeah, a couple of minutes to go. Perez was on provisional pole. This is Max Verstappen going onto the back straight, drifting it round the corner because... You know, the traction out of this was so difficult to find. The drivers are experimenting with all sorts of different lines, breaking at different points because they wanted to stay off the rubber that was laid down by, you know, in the dry conditions. So, you know, they're taking the wet lines through these corners. Absolutely fascinating to watch. Piastri then put in a good lap that put him second. And this was Max Verstappen on another flyer and again went off the track. This was actually the final corner here when Norris went off at about the same exact moment. So Verstappen, yeah, basically didn't have the grip that he, you know, ambition over adhesion, as they often say. He went wide in the final quarter, and that was his lap time done. So Max then had one attempt to stick it on pole after, you know, two or three laps he'd got off the track. It's rare to see Max struggle that much in these conditions, especially because, you know, the Red Bull's the best car. Now, there is also a debate on the relative downforce levels because the Red Bull was, you know, a rocket ship as always in a straight line. And it seemed like the McLaren and Mercedes running a bit more downforce, so that should give an edge in those conditions, but, like, those guys were nowhere near in the dry. And then the wet comes around, and um, that's, I think, our top four drivers of the day were, you know, probably goes to show just the best talent on the grid. Now, Leclerc might well have been up there. I think, as I say, I'm pretty sure he got held up by Joe on his first attempt and then couldn't improve on his second. But pretty much out of nowhere, Lewis Hamilton comes through and sticks it on provisional pole with a 159.3. So this was an incredible moment, really, just because, you know, Leclerc had improved, Perez had improved, you know, Norris, he'd had a lap time delete, I think, already. Alonso then put it P1, and then Hamilton went pole, provisional pole, by nine tenths of a second. You know, Verstappen couldn't match this, Sainz couldn't match this, and it looked like it was going to be it. And Hamilton had, you know, pulled another wet weather masterclass here and stuck it on provisional pole. But then Lando Norris comes through with a banger lap. A 157.9 puts it a second and a little bit ahead of Hamilton as well. And, you know, this was the lap times at the time, right? So Piastri, three seconds behind Norris. Joe was nine seconds behind. Bottas, three and a half. Leclerc, Perez, Sainz, Alonso, Verstappen. The best time he could put in was just around the two-minute mark. And when Max Verstappen in a Red Bull is struggling to put together, like, a, a combatant lap, it just shows how difficult the conditions were and how talented, you know, the guys at the top of the leaderboard here are. So Norris in that McLaren, I mean... I don't know there was some discussion on why the McLaren was so good in those conditions, but, you know, Piastri couldn't get close to Norris here. So Norris put it pole, but then all of a sudden, he wasn't pole anymore, and his lap time was deleted, and Hamilton was back to pole, and Alonso then was P2. So, you know, all of a sudden, like, Hamilton was back to provisional pole, and at this point, Leclerc was about to cross the line. He couldn't improve. Bottas and Joe, I think they improved, but not enough to make meaningful impact. The only man left to cross the line was Lewis Hamilton. He was still on a fast lap, and Hamilton was on provisional pole, was the only man left to complete a lap and just as he crossed the line to make a marginal improvement and secure what seemed like pole position Norris was then magically back on pole because his lap time was reinstated so this was understandably very confusing for people watching from home at another FIA interesting decision shall we say because you know, Norris was on pole, then his lap time got deleted for track limits, then he wasn't on pole, Hamilton's there and he's about to cross the line and magically Norris is back again. So it's just one of these things that made people think, like, what are we doing here? So Norris, Hamilton, Alonso, that is your top three. If it was dry, we would not have seen anything like this. But um, that's what we saw. So Hamilton second, of course, Russell 11th after that tricky part. But exactly why did this happen? So this is Lando Norris going off track on the final corner, on the lap before 
his flying lap. This is the important thing to realize. He did not go off track during the lap that secured him pole position in the end. So the lap itself was perfectly fine. No track limits violations. Phenomenal lap from Norris to have a pole margin, I'm pretty sure, bigger than any that we have seen in the turbo hybrid era. But of course, controversial as well, because I don't know if Lewis Hamilton was aware that Norris's time was deleted, but theoretically, Mercedes may have told him, or he may have seen it on a screen, I don't know, that Norris's time is gone, and therefore in his final sector, would he have pushed as hard if he knew that he needed to find time to find pole position? You know, that's a question mark. But this was the lap before his lap time got deleted, where he quite clearly goes way outside of track limits onto the gravel. Now, this isn't the first time in F1 history we have had lap times reinstated. It's actually happened a few times over the last couple of years. The lap times have been deleted and then reinstated. So, you know, it does happen, but it's just the circumstances under which it did happen caused some major questions. So people were trying to figure out why this was the case. So at most circuits, I would say most, certainly some circuits, if you exceed track limits on the final corner, your upcoming lap is invalidated. This is the case in Bahrain. This is the case in Austria, for example, when if you go outside of track limits, then the lap time is deleted. So this, for example, is in Bahrain. This is what the race director's notes say in Bahrain. So they say in accordance with the provisions of Article 33.3, the white lines define the track edges. So they don't clarify track limits in the actual sporting regulations. It is clarified in the race director's notes on a weekend to weekend basis. So this first part is always here, but in Bahrain and in Austria and other circuits like that, and most circuits, they will have this element here as well. Additionally, each time a driver fails to respect track limits of the entry or exit of turn 15 to the final corner will result in that lap time and the immediately following lap time being invalidated by the stewards. Because if you go outside of track limits on the final corner, you can carry more speed through the line and therefore gain an advantage through the lap. This, however, was the kind of race director's notes for this weekend, where that piece is simply not here. Right, so in Bahrain and other circuits, it is there. This weekend, it's not there. So the question was, all right, is that not there intentionally? Was this accidental? My feeling is this is probably an intentional thing from the stewards to not put it there because there's gravel on the final corner. Norris went outside of track limits and according to Andrea Stella, lost three tenths in doing so. So his lap itself was fine, but of course, it's not necessarily about that. The question is, if the rule says X, then X must be followed, regardless of, you know, whether the stewards want to kind of use their own judgment, right? If the rule is the rule, then you should follow the rule, regardless of the circumstances. And that rule is usually the rule. But in this case, it wasn't the rule. So it's like, was that intentionally done? Because you know, the track limits violations they knew wouldn't affect the upcoming lap? Or was this kind of like an oversight from the stewards to not have that in the race director's notes and therefore a mistake somewhere? It's just, again, they can't seem to help themselves, can they? Weekends to weekends, there's always something with the FIA and the steward to their decisions that just call things into question. So, you know, personally, I think Norris keeping his lap was the right thing because the rules on the weekend said that he should keep his lap and therefore he did and therefore he gets pole position. And, you know, over the course of one lap, he did put in the fastest lap time. So I think it's fair, but it's just not entirely, it doesn't feel right the way that that session concluded. And again, the FBA are under the spotlight. There was also a question like, you know, could Mercedes have appealed this? You know, could they have said, could Toto have gone in and say, you know, maybe let's let's do it because Toto actually says, I haven't seen the details. I saw that he had four tyres off the track, but honestly, that lap was even slower. He probably could have gone faster, so I'm okay with that. So, you know, it's always the thing, isn't it, with Mercedes? It's like, you know, could, could they not try? Could they not speak to the stewards and say, hey, like, you know, look, the rule is usually this. Why is it not this? Like, what are we going to do about it type thing? And, you know, maybe Mercedes haven't fought enough for Lewis Hamilton over the last few years would be the argument of some. But of course, Hamilton was happy in general. Like, um, sure, he'd love to be sprint pole, but the session, he still enjoyed himself. Out-qualifying both Ferraris and both Red Bulls is certainly a statement, I think. A, really a, a statement drive from Lewis Hamilton today, given the circumstances, because I think there's just so much recency bias, and maybe this is part of it, the fact that we're talking about this today, but it's like, it wasn't long ago that Hamilton was P3 in the Drivers' Championship last season in a car substantially worse than the Red Bulls and wasn't too far off P2, and now apparently he's washed all of a sudden. And it's the same thing elsewhere, right? Like, you've got to look at it from a bigger picture perspective, but at the end of the day, it's going to be tough for that car in the dry, 
because the Mercedes is a very good. And, um, you know, Hamilton putting it where he did today was, you know, incredibly impressive. But as he says, they probably need some rain for the rest of the weekend, which it may still, like, there is definitely possible that it's going to keep raining and we might get more of these conditions, which I'm absolutely there for. If we get them in the sprinter and the Grand Prix itself, man, that would be pretty spectacular. But probably if, you know, Hamilton or even Norris want to hold on to where they are and Verstappen isn't just to drive through everyone in front of him, which he probably will tomorrow morning, then I think the rain might be necessary to make that happen. But yes, yeah, Hamilton says, so happy. As soon as I saw the rain coming, I was getting excited because naturally on the dry conditions, we're not quick enough. When the rain came, I thought it was a better opportunity and um, it all kind of came alive. The first time ever, by the way, that Rebel will not be starting in the top three for a sprint race. So pretty interesting. Will Verstappen still win based on the pace of that car this weekend so far? And at least in terms of what they look like in qualifying in the dry conditions, probably yes. But um, yeah, the answer is we simply don't know. So very much I'm trying to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.